The word goes for. With music by the sons of thunder. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hello, I'm Bill Glad. I'd like to welcome you to The Word Goes Forth, and I'm going to start right off by sharing some scriptures, some of Jesus' words from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, starting with verse 23. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up, and has shut to the door, and you begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence. And thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves are thrust out. Now this is a layman's ministry, and we come together every week to tape this program so we can tell you you must be born again. When the Lord blows the trumpet on you, whether it be in the, what we call the rapture, the day of judgment. We want you to be ready. You'll have no excuse because we're going to tell you how you don't have to be in that group with the gnashing and weeping. So we're going to share some more scriptures. We're going to share some gospel music. And, and we have a testimony for you today. So I, I'd like you to stay tuned. And as I said, we want you to be ready when God calls you. And by the end of this program, you will have heard the way in that straight gate. So I think you're going to enjoy the program anyway. So just stay with us. I stand at the doorway I back to the country The doorway to freedom So close
Summer is going to be the, the old rugged cross. For a per, uh, special person out there. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The anthem was offering and she. for their gospel music. Now I'm going to be reading from the 14th chapter of Luke and I'd invite you to take your Bibles out and follow along with me. I try to read mostly Jesus Christ's words because we on this ministry, it's layman's ministry as I've told you before, but we try to speak the words that our Father spoke through Jesus the Son because it's God's word that goes forth on this program, not ours. Now I'm going to be reading starting with the 15th verse and if you don't have your Bibles, mark this down, Luke 14, starting with verse 15. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life, also he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? Lest haply after he hath laid the foundation 
and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begun to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able to, whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an embassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now we share scripture and we share gospel music and we try to tell you how Jesus Christ can change your life and how he's real. He's not just uh, a, a, an emotional crutch or spiritual crutch that we lean on because we all need Jesus Christ to enter the kingdom of God. In John 14, 6, Jesus himself says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by the Son. And that's what we try to show you. We try to demonstrate this. In uh, Revelations chapter 12, 11, we became overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony and loving not our life unto the death. Now we have a man here that's going to share testimony and tell you what Jesus is doing in his life and uh, we'll let you determine whether or not Jesus Christ is real. And uh, if, if God is drawing you, we'd like to hear from you after you get done hearing this testimony. And our name and address will be shown at the end of the program. And so if you just repeat after me, Father God, in Jesus' name, I do believe that you sent your only son, Jesus, to walk this earth as a man, that he died for our sins, that he rose again on the third day, and he now sits at your right hand. I do want to make Jesus Lord of my life. I'm tired of bearing my own burdens. I'm tired of running my life in a second-hand way. I want him to be Lord of my life. I want him to live and abide in me, and I want his word to abide in me. And from this day on, I will have eternal life, and I can walk in that by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now that you've accepted Jesus Christ in your life, I want you to understand what you did. In the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 7, Jesus said, Marvel not, that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Now, he's talking about being born of the Spirit of God. And when Eve fell in the Garden of Eden, she became separated spiritually from God. And what you did, what is called being born again, is born of the Spirit of God. You just renewed that relationship that was broken back in the Garden of Eden. And now, these rules in the Holy Bible apply to you. And his promises apply to you. He said, now that you're of him, you, you can ask anything of the Father, in the name of Jesus, and the Father will do it, because you're a son of God or a child of God. Now, we're concerned about you. We want you to get your Bibles out and start reading them. If you don't have a Bible, we have a few good news for not modern man. What it is, it's a paraphrased Bible written in today's language, and it's easy to understand. And you send us your name and address, we'll try to get one to you. Now, we'd like to, if you've got a question or, or you have a prayer need that you don't uh, you don't want anybody to know your name or we won't share your name but we will pray as a group here in this ministry and, and we'll ask God to meet your needs from his riches in glory now that's one of the promises that's open to you as a believer God says you'll meet all our needs from his riches in glory and he can meet your needs in a way that you never dreamed possible you know I've shared so many times that this ministry is a miracle it's a labor of love and, and we can't describe to you all the things that have happened here, but God has his hand on it, and, and he he's used it in a mighty way. And our whole purpose is to tell you, you must be born again, because Jesus Christ said there's no other way except through the Son. You cannot get to the Father. You can pray to, to anybody you want. You know, in the Old Testament, they prayed to graven images, and, and they had their stone gods and their wooden gods and their, their gold idols and all of that, but it didn't mean a thing, because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me, the Son. And that's what we're trying to tell you. Now, everything we've told you in this ministry, everything that, 
people like John DeShane has shared with you can be checked out through your Bible. It's for today, it's now. You can get what we call born again or saved simply by asking God to do it. You don't have to take lessons. You don't have to be in a special place. I if you're uh, watching this program in a restaurant, you can ask Jesus right there to come in and save your soul. And he'll be faithful to do it because he says so. I in Romans uh, chapter 10, verse 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that means you, right where you're at. And that's the object of all of this. As I said, we come together only to tell you what Jesus said in the first place. You must be born again. Now, he's getting ready to come for a church without spot or wrinkle. And you're going to be cleansed by the word. And this is the word, the Holy Bible. And you'll have no excuse when you stand before God Almighty. So I encourage you, get your Bibles out and read it. Don't believe me. Don't believe anybody. Don't trust your soul to any man. Trust it to God Almighty, to Jesus Christ. With that, Ruth, I'd like to thank you for doing a good job with John DeShane. And thank you, Bill. I'd like to thank John DeShane for coming and sharing his testimony with us and all the people that you don't see behind the scenes and Armand Carter and Earl Riandel and most of all you folks for watching us. Without you, there'd be no ministry. So with that, this is Bill Glad for The Word Goes Forth. We hope you'll join us again next week.